And now, back to the Weather Classroom. What if you could help a city decide how many snow plows to put on the streets before a big storm? What if you could advise stockbrokers on Wall Street to invest in grain because of next year's mild winter and wet spring? Or what if you worked with a pro ball team to make sure they knew that their fields were in good shape for the next year? Well, then you'd be a forecaster. A forecaster studies weather conditions and then predicts changes that will happen in the future. While Jason's been hopping around the country, Brandon's been locked away in his room doing some research on forecast meteorologists. Because of new stuff that they're learning about forecasting, meteorologists can be more accurate than ever. Oh, in fact, new data about the relationship between tropical waters and the atmosphere is, is turning up regional climate pattern predictions that are accurate months in advance. Tropical waters rock! Trying to do a show here. Whoa! Somebody needs a little nap. Ow! So, anyway. Most of the high-profile people in meteorology are forecasters for big-time TV stations. And we got to hang with one of the best. In case you thought you couldn't be a scientist and cool at the same time, meet Mish Michaels. She's young, she's smart, and she works for one of the biggest stations in the United States as their on-camera meteorologist. Check this out. You are watching 7 News on the news station. Weather-wise, some rain overnight delayed the Red Sox game, but really didn't bother us too much. Ben, you headed for the Red Sox game. You best bring along that rain poncho. The rain will be steady at first, hopefully tapering down to periodic showers so they can get the game in tonight. Temperature 60 to 65. I wake up at about 5.30 on Saturday morning. Uh, get ready quickly, head into work. It's about three miles away. A couple of clouds up there. Got to see what's happening. And this is the Weather Center where I do all of my forecasting. And what my job is, is to figure out a puzzle. I can piece those puzzle pieces together in a way that forms uh, a forecast that hopefully is useful to the public. So I have to analyze the atmosphere, and the atmosphere works in layers. I have to figure out what's happening thousands of feet above the Earth's surface, and interspersed in that, I'm also doing cut-ins during the Today Show. We'll see you again in the next half hour with the latest on the remnants of Debbie. I'll put together a forecast set up all my maps, radar imagery, satellite imagery, along with those images that I created to make a show. From there, I broadcast from 9 until 11. I'm on every 10 to 15 minutes. Cooler along the coast, and it just gets warmer from there. I'm off the air. I do all my radio broadcasts. I'm Channel 7 meteorologist Mish Michaels in the WRKO Weather Center. I have a little joystick and a camera on the roof, a couple of floors up where the stars are and the comets are. So sometimes I'll be up here in a snowstorm, maybe when it's 100 degrees out here. So you want it summer, you get it. Uh, then I do another analysis that explain what kind of weather we're going to get. This wall enables us to take two images, me and a weather graphic, and put them together as if they're actually together. My clicker is pretty much everything. My clicker enables me to go from one weather graphic to another. What happens is because there's this long cord, Sometimes I've stepped on the cord and pulled this weather clicker right out of my hand. If I lose my clicker, I'm stuck on one weather graphic for two minutes and 30 seconds. Kind of boring. And I've got a cool new show with the Weather Channel. It's called Atmospheres. Watch Atmospheres, a new hour-long magazine. <laughs> 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 Superstar. Oh, thanks, Hennessy. <laughs> I was definitely a weather goober at a young age, yeah. And when I was in kindergarten, a tornado went through our apartment complex. And that's the first thing I remember about being on planet Earth. If you want to become a meteorologist, there's many ways you can go about doing that. Um, first of all, you want to focus on math and science in the classroom. Um, you can call one of your local stations in your community and say, hey, I want to be a weather watcher. Get some instrumentation, um, a thermometer, a wind vane, a, an anemometer, and call in your observations. Hey, all the weather. That detailed kind of information is so critical to a local meteorologist. So my weather watchers are a very important part of my work. Terry's on the phone. He'll be with us in a moment and to create graphics that make sense on TV. Terry does a lot of that. Basically try to depict on a map what the today's weather situation is going to be like. It's the Boston area. We go back to the palette, we click on a rain symbol, we make it rain over New York State. Start again at 9 o'clock. The evening um, 
charts come out, redo graphics for the 6 o'clock show, go on at 6. Early this morning we had lots of low-level clouds and fogs. Sort of redo my radio forecast, redo my internet forecast. So I start doing analysis again, updating my graphics. I'm on at 11. So yes, it feels a bit more humid, but there is drier air on the way. I get home by about 12.30, quarter of 1. I go to bed around 1, 1.30. Then I get back up at 5.30 and I do it all over again the next day. It's the neatest job I could ever think of. And now that I am a meteorologist, it's even better than I ever thought. I can't explain it. It's my little obsession. Watching the sky was just something neat. So what do you think? I know it sounds pretty cool. Yeah, but a few of you probably still have your hearts set on careers in underwater basket weaving. Yeah, but don't give up. You can still be a weather watcher in your spare time. All you need to do is get together a few simple tools. A thermometer, a barometer, a wind sock, and your local library has stacks of weather books. Learn to ID clouds. Check this out. Big fat daddy cumulus clouds mean there's a bad storm a brewing. Wispy, horse-tailed cirrus clouds mean the weather's about to change. <sighs> so, if you want to be a weather watcher, all you have to do is check out TV, surf the net, and combine that info with what you see in the sky. That's the best way to get the total weather picture. But don't forget, your best meteorological instruments are always right here. Later. Well, that's about it for the Weather Classroom. We've seen a lot of the weather world today, and hopefully it's given you a lot to think about. As our world changes, we need to understand why it does. And for that, we need bright young people like you. Studying the weather on our planet can really make a difference. And now you've seen that sky watching can be more than just a hobby. It might just be a career that takes you all over the world. And by understanding our world better, we make sure the future holds nothing but blue skies. For the Weather Classroom, I'm Jocelyn Bodigan. See you next time.